This is Ubuntu Studio, the very Linux distribution I relied upon ever since I started this YouTube channel. And I loved it. I genuinely loved it. Now, was it perfect? No, of course not. Neither is the early 90s Mitsubishi Galant VR4. And we all know how much I'd rather drive one of those than whatever fridge on wheels the health and safety department messed up last week. The experience was so good in fact that it ultimately spawned my Linux a new hope video. You see, I didn't know anything about video editing or sound editing, but I didn't mind learning an entirely new set of software because Ubuntu Studio made it easy. The 3D modeling bit? That was a bit rougher going, admittedly. You know, the kind of terrain where you want a fully fledged rally car for. But I even got that sorted out. And if you've been through the comment section on some of my other videos, and for God's sake, find something more productive to do with your time. You can see me recommend this very distro to people who would like to start creating content using Linux. Because I believed in it. I still believe the package they deliver is unmatched. Admittedly, Apple does something similar, but that usually comes at Apple cost, which includes selling your kidneys, your firstborn, and possibly your immortal soul. And Windows, you may ask? Windows doesn't really ship with anything useful. No Audacity for sound editing, no Caden Live for video editing, no Krita, no Blender, no Darktable, no Ardour, and none of the other amazing tools in between that ship with Ubuntu Studio. Microsoft gives you spyware and Notepad and then wants you to be thankful for it. Ubuntu Studio, on the other hand, gives you everything. That way, the beginner and more experienced user can pick their favorite toolset, experiment, and find their workflow. It's bloody brilliant. Now, some of you might be saying, but Dom, the ISO is massive. Eight gigabytes-ish. Yes. And the ISO is eight plus gigabytes because it's comprehensive. It comes with my favorite desktop environment, KDE Plasma as standard. It has, in typical Ubuntu fashion, the option to install proprietary NVIDIA drivers during the installation process. Third-party codecs. It even scans your system and sets up a proper audio editing experience automatically. And the best part, it comes on Ubuntu's LTS long-term support version that should guarantee smooth sailing until April 2027, according to their own website. And it was. It was smooth sailing until quite recently when Ubuntu decided to kick me square in the teeth. You see, I was aware that my NVIDIA Quattro K6000 was a bit of an outlier, a relic, some might even say a dinosaur. But the NVIDIA driver worked well enough, and that way my old gear didn't need to go into the bean, even though Microsoft told me I was not allowed to upgrade to Windows 11. Well, guess what? Ubuntu doesn't even tell you you're not allowed to upgrade. They just push an update and essentially brick your system. Brilliant. The first time this happened was when Ubuntu decided to switch from Linux, Nvidia, low latency, something 250.1 to 250.7. The Nvidia 470 driver, on the other hand, relies and only works with the 250.1 version. Now, don't jump into the comments with you, NVIDIA should make their drivers open source bollocks. To be honest, I don't care. I really don't care. Here's the thing. Ubuntu supports the NVIDIA driver 
from the get-go. They put it as an option into the installation process and it is right there in the driver manager as the recommended driver. So why? Why would they actively decide to remove the dependency needed for the driver they themselves offer and recommend? When people brought their cars into our shop for a tire change, we didn't decide to rip the passenger seat out and weld the boot shut because we thought that would make for a better experience for the customer. That would be insane. And sure, maybe some fix will come up. Maybe some kind soul in the community figures out how to make the NVIDIA 470 driver work after all. Kudos to the Nouveau driver team, by the way. More on that later. But here's the problem. I and basically every other user doesn't care about a possible future fix when we are greeted with a black terminal screen on only one out of three monitors the next time we start the computer. What if there had been an important meeting that morning or an important email for, I don't know, immigration purposes? Don't break my bloody computer. At that point, I would have been completely stuck. But I was able to fire up ChatGPT on my phone and revert the issue. Could have been different though, couldn't it? I could have lost all my family photos, all my personal files, everything, because I'd have to do a fresh install. Now, I do have backups, but not everybody does. Not everyone knows to do that. So I learned I could hold those driver updates and exclude them from future update cycles. Brilliant. Except that's not something one should have to do on an LTS version of anything really. The full functionality should be guaranteed even if it comes at the cost of bleeding edge gadgetry. That's the entire point of long-term support. The glue is in the bloody name. Then came the point update, 2404.3, which shipped with kernel 6.13, I believe. Version 2404.1, had shipped with kernel 5.9 or so. And you think, wouldn't you, that this shouldn't be a problem. Otherwise, they wouldn't push the update, wouldn't they? Wrong. The NVIDIA 470 driver outright doesn't compile after kernel version 6.0-ish, somewhere in that range. That meant update Reboot, system bricked. Again, because the NVIDIA driver was still installed, sort of, and creating all kinds of havoc. I had one screen working, a different one this time. Well, just to keep it interesting. No taskbar, but at least a desktop environment. So I was able to ask Claude for advice via Firefox which I started from the terminal. Did I mention, don't break my bloody computer. After a lot of unnecessary terminal work, the kind of thing that makes you question your life choices, I was now running version 2404.3 with the Nouveau driver. Because through some black magic and probably unspoken sacrifices to the demons of Nvidia, the Nouveau team somehow managed to make old Kepler GPUs work. Holy cow, I was even able to use Wayland for the first time. Proper multi-monitor scaling. This might actually be okay. Wrong again. Kepler GPUs are supported and consumer models probably work fine, but Quadro cards, they don't fall into this category. 
They are like a fleet vehicle. Same look and feel as the consumer model, different everything else, depending on the use case of said fleet vehicle. It got so bad that my system froze every single time I tried to copy and paste a video track in Shotcut. The card makes some kind of a firmware call that is currently or at least was at that time not supported in the Nouveau driver. I know NVIDIA didn't make these specifications open source and available to the developing team. And once again, I don't care. The LTS version of Ubuntu Studio and Ubuntu was offered with NVIDIA driver support. The driver is still in the driver manager listed as the recommended driver. So don't push an update that breaks people's systems. This made my computer essentially unusable. When I edited episode 4 of my Windows Shopping for Linux series, every second command in Shotcut was Ctrl S. Because the computer would freeze 10 times in a five minute clip. The freeze could require anything from restarting shortcut to full system reboot in order to be resolved. At that point, I was seriously considering ditching the entire charade and installing Windows 10 Pro again. I can do that. I have a system builder version right here. But I decided otherwise. I backed up all my data. I was going to install version 2404.1 again because that Ubuntu Studio had worked brilliantly. So I did. However, during the installation I was asked if I want to download the newest installer and update my version. Well, hell no. That's the whole point why I installed the old version. After the install and reboot, an update notification popped up, telling me to update over 285 packages, essentially forcing the exact update I just denied during installation. So at that point I locked the system down. Security updates only, because I just needed a system that works like the initial LTS system I'd installed over a year ago. That's all I wanted. But I was also aware that my K6000 wouldn't serve me much longer. It was on borrowed time. And then Christmas came early, on Black Friday to be precise. My wonderful wife, God bless her, gifted me an AMD Radeon RX 9060 XT. Finally, a card that supports Linux, as stated on the box. Right, data backup, system upgrade, time to start into the glorious AMD future. And I was greeted by one working monitor out of three. But no panic? Right? That's just a matter of uninstalling the NVIDIA driver, opening up the system again, doing a sudo update, sudo full upgrade. Easy. Wrong. Nothing worked, except one monitor with minimal graphic support. Still, no panic. I just done a backup. I can physically separate my backup drive from the system and do a fresh install of Ubuntu Studio 2404.3, the newest version with all the bells and whistles. Because AMD loves Linux, right? What the actual fuck? Ubuntu Studio wouldn't even install. The installer froze with this funky green glitch bar at the top of, you guessed it, one screen. At that point, I just thought to myself, Ubuntu, f*** yourself. I switched to Fedora 43 Atomic with the Cosmic Desktop 
which I'd liked so much in my other video. Yes, you heard that correctly. I ditched an all-inclusive distribution I genuinely loved for a naked atomic Fedora version with a desktop environment that, at the point of writing and filming this, was still in better status. And what can I say? I haven't looked back since. I do have Kynoite on a switchable drive, just in case. But so far, no case. I hate to jinx it, but it works. And the multi-monitor scaling works somehow better than in KDE Plasma. But that is a story for another time. And with this step into the new Atomic Era, goodbye Ubuntu.